Hello again. It has been a very long time since I uploaded a video and there are several reasons for that. The main reason being that I just got a new job and I'm trying to get into that. I'm actually working with kind of retro computing. I'm working on an IBM mainframe. So that's cool. Although it's a modern mainframe, it's a Z13, but still a cool job. So anyway, uh, I want to talk about this today. This is a handheld uh, games console by Bandai Electronics. Bandai was back then a toys manufacturer and it's still a toy manufacturer today. Bandai make the Power Rangers action figures and Transformer figures and so on. In 1978, Bandai first produced an electronic toy, which was a baseball game. They called it the LSI Baseball, which was a handheld device which you played baseball on. If you remember 1978, when Bandai produced their first electronic handheld toy, that was two years after the Atari 2600. So it was very early in the games uh, industry. It was not until two years later 1980 that Nintendo first produced a similar toy, the Nintendo Game & Watch. So Bandai was right there from the start. Unfortunately Bandai doesn't make games anymore but they made lots of games back in the day. They made games for the Nintendo Entertainment System, they made games for Super Nintendo, for PlayStation uh, and so on. Bandai also released their own gaming console which didn't gain much traction. Anyway, in 1982, Nintendo released the double screen, not the modern double screen that we think of today, but a Game & Watch with, which folded up and had two screens uh, with two LCD displays. Bandai made a similar thing, but instead of having a fold up with two screens on, they made two screens on top of each other like a sandwich. So when you finished playing on one screen and finished one level, it became transparent and you could see the game underneath. So it became like two scenes in a game. And that is what's shown here on the packing, the two screens. I'm not sure how many games Bandai manufactured. I know that Nintendo made 59 Game & Watch games with one extra game that you could not buy, you could only win it. So 60 Game & Watch uh, games in total. Bandai, I have found a list from a collector that has 271 Bandai games, but I don't think that he had collected all of them. So at least 271, maybe more. And I also don't know how many units were sold. I know that Nintendo sold 43 million uh, Game & Watch games. Bandai, I have not found any figures at all. So if you know how many Bandai Electronic games were sold, please let me know in the comments. So let's have a look at this then. Let's unbox it. So this is how the box looked like. And you can see the double layer LCD screens here. It's not LCD as we might think LCD today, you will see. The thing about this one is powered by solar panels, so you cannot play it uh, in the dark, you cannot play it in dim light, uh, but on the other hand it's not backlit either, so you need a lot of light to even see the screen. I think it's good for collecting. I think the solar power is good for collecting because there are no batteries that can leak and cause damage to the electronics, like uh, the Game & Watch uh, games, or like CMOS batteries in computers. So let's check out the back side. It's all in Japanese, but you can look at the pictures. You need to sit by the window or under a lamp or a tube lamp to play it. Well, I'm not doing either of these, I'm sitting outside. Here are the two LCD screens. So what Nintendo did in their Game & Watch uh, dual screen, they had one screen at the bottom and one screen at the top. And then you play the game at the top, and when you finished, you continue playing at the bottom. Here, you play the upper screen first, 
which is this uh, flying tombstones and bat thing. And when you finish that game, it turns transparent, so you can see the layer underneath. The layer underneath is the layer with Frankenstein's monster, the Grim Reaper, Dracula, a mummy and a werewolf. Other than that, I don't know much. Um, it came out in 1980, uh, because that's when Bandai started making these dual screen models. Uh, it's not one of these uh, earlier models. Before 1980, they only had one screen, uh, like the 1978 baseball game, for example. I got this game after I had an exhibition at the Museum of Technology here in Stockholm. Uh, I was exhibiting the ABC80, or the Amiga computers, the Commodore computers, early DOS machines and so on. And one of the guests to that exhibition actually gave this to me uh, as a gift. So that's very nice and thank you a lot. And I hope that you watch this episode when I show this off to the world. Let's open it. It's really nicely packed. It has a little instruction. Terror House. I thought it was Horror House, but it's Terror House, okay. And it's showing off all the monsters. Uh, this is in French, I think. So there must be an English. Ah, yes, here are the English instructions. Showing all the buttons, all the monsters. It says Frankenstein, but it's obviously a Frankenstein's monster. So the designers of uh, this game has obviously not uh, read Mary Shelley. And the Grim Reaper is called the skeleton for some reason. And here is the unit itself, in a very nice styrofoam packing. So the way this works is that there's a series of fixed liquid crystals. This is the demo mode on, uh, when you switch it on it's demo. So it's like those early uh, nine segment calculators, uh, uh, but here instead of having straight uh, line segments, all the segments are made into small monsters and a hero. There's a really small joystick here for controlling it. And this was there's a really small joystick here for controlling it. And this was before Nintendo standardized the industry with the D-pad. So you control it like this. Or with your thumb. It is a bit awkward because, as we are used to nowadays, there should be a D-pad here on the right side. But the industry standard didn't exist back then, so there's a joystick here on the left instead. It has sound, uh, which you can switch off, so you don't disturb other people. No headphone jack, and uh, the sound is just beeping, so it's like a small PC speaker, but even more simple. The ACL key is all clear, which basically just um, clears the memory of this device. Because when you open the lid and sun starts shining on this panel, it, uh, the memory gets uh, 
powered up, but it gets powered up into a random state. So you clear the memory here. With the select button, you can select game one or game two. So it should show G1 and G2 up here in the corner. It's a bit difficult to see on the camera maybe, but there's G1, there's G2. It's the same game, G1 and G2 is the same game, uh, but it becomes, with G2 it becomes harder, the monsters become quicker and so on. So it's basically just speeding up the CPU clock. And then you start the game here. And I don't know how you can see this. Um, I will try to hold it like this maybe. Okay, I will rearrange my camera and then I will be back. So you are stabbing monsters. Uh, you are meeting flying tombstones, uh, flying bats, uh, Dracula, a mummy, uh, the Grim Reaper, Frankenstein's monster, and a werewolf in this game. And I really like horror games, so this is a perfect gift. Thank you. Scene 2 Alright, that was all for today. It was a very short video, and uh, but I hope that you enjoyed it anyway. I will... Uh, I will try to make a more substantial, a longer episode soon. Uh, it might be... I will try to make a longer and more substantial video soon, but I also have a lot to do at work, so let's see. I recently got a Sun Ultra One working, the first 64-bit PC workstation, I su suppose. So it might be a video about that. I might also make a video about uh, new uh, my collection of Atari 2600 games. I have, I think, around 20 games now, so it might be uh, time for a video to show those off. So let's see. 
or I might uh, continue the ABC80 series. Time will tell. Until then, see you later.